The prescription of the underlying problem has been misdiagnosed and therefore we are coming up with the wrong remedies. What is regarded as being the consequence of this changing ownership, the dispersion of ownership of corporations, is to give rise to what is termed the agency problem. That is to say there is a separation between the ownership and the control of the corporation. No one shareholder has much incentive to oversee and monitor the running of a corporation. And as a consequence, managers of corporations are allowed to run riot. They pay themselves egregious salaries. They engage in wasteful investment. They undertake disastrous acquisitions. And as a consequence, nearly all policy towards the corporation in North America and Europe in particular has been devoted to that one set of issues concerned with the agency problem, the Dodd-Frank Act and the Sarbanes-Oxley Act in the United States, for example, the Cadbury Code in the UK, European Commission action plans on corporate governance and company law. All of those have as their objective to address the agency problem. That was not, however, the source of the problem of the financial crisis. Indeed, those banks that had the highest powered incentives, the closest relationship between executive remuneration and the shareholder performance of those banks, took the greatest risks before the financial crisis. Those banks that had the best corporate governance according to conventional criteria were the ones that failed the most during the financial crisis. The financial crisis was not an agency problem. It was a very different problem. It was essentially a problem of fraud. I don't mean fraud in the straightforward sense that we might think of it when we talk about, for example, what Bernie Madoff did. I'm talking about something which is much more subtle, something that we teach our students in business school all the time to do to make money. There are two ways of making money. The first is to engage in what one might term wealth creation. That is to make good or do good. The second is to engage in wealth transfer. By wealth transfer what I mean is to make money at the expense of others. That is what the financial crisis was about. Because there is a divergence of interest between the two main parties involved in financial institutions. Shareholders benefit from the upside gains when banks and financial institutions are doing very well and when they're doing very badly, so badly that they go bankrupt, then it's the creditors, the depositors and the bondholders who take the losses or the taxpayer who bails them out. So from the point of view of the shareholder, it's a heads I win, tails you lose bet. And as a consequence, shareholders like the coin to be flipped. And they incentivize their management to do exactly that. On the other hand, creditors like banks to be very conservative because they take the losses. And that wealth transfer was precisely the problem that underlay the financial crisis.